മോഡി ആരോഗ്യത്തിൻ അടയാളം have to be one and all and one together only then we can fight with the illness and bring out wellness to every member not only of our own country don't try to reform every one around us let us try to change ourselves we have complete power over ourselves our thoughts the words we speak and the actions so don't try to say that i'm going to change they will change by themselves be free from fear be free from egoism be free from jealousy so avai said ariyadi ketkin nadiyadi velu ariyadi ariyadi manilarai pirathal ariyadi if you ask me what is the rarest of the rarest rarest of the rarest is being born as a human being you are not a bony animal you are a brainy and we talk so much about our brain power fruits are the only one which will give you the brain power because it is not taking the other energy for digestion jeevan mein phal paane ke liye phal prayog karo the mind is so powerful so vast if we think that heavens and the earth is big the mind can conquer the heaven and go much beyond and see what is beyond that that is the power your mind has that our forefathers when they were working in the field they were more healthier they never had any diabetes problem they never had any indigestion problem they never had any joint pains problem the reason is when they were walking bare feet and working in the field the pressure points were already being done while walking bare feet they used to get the pressure points activated wellness is basically a preventive aspect it is not something when we get disease we think of wellness ladies and gentlemen this is a session for practicing the cure without touching the patient how to go about with personal wellness throughout his life career at any point of time no need to worry about our future as of now we are living for the future our days are not going to be suffering emotionally charged no need to be angry sorrow no need to be sobbing lamenting on what has gone by i need something today that is i want my tomorrow hail and hearty i don't worry about what has gone by i am not worrying about today things are getting on very well with me as i am standing here i am not thinking about today but the very next moment until my last day what will happen to me i need a carefree life not actually careless life but a carefree life full of confidence full of faith and full of bliss that is awaiting me tomorrow when i say i need something i am not able to do it today which means i have to hope for it i am hoping that my need will be fulfilled one day so this is where i am now i am at a loss but i want every gain for me i want the whole life ahead of me 
with peace, composure, no suffering whatsoever. I will like or I will entertain even in my mind level. There should not be any adversities or bad women that shall befall me. This is my inherent nature. This is my ardent need. Nobody possesses the way. Nobody can show me the way towards what I need. So when I say I need, the need is with me as a feel in the depth of my heart. So what is this feel actually? Where from it came? I am seeing so much of worry, sorrowful states, so much of bad omen. We even think that maybe the curse has fallen upon me. It is not so. I wanted to be a doctor. Now I am not a doctor of the kinds that the people know, but of a different nature. A natural feel with me is that I want to be a doctor, but I don't want to touch any medicine. I don't even want to touch the patient, but the feel must cure. If I have come over here, I have a feel in my heart that I must go and attend the session and I must go and deliver a speech. So the thought has brought me here, not actually the body has come here without the thought. The thought proceeds and such a big frame is being conducted towards where I want to be. The thought has so much power, the feel and the thought must be combined together. I am not thinking about anything. For that matter, how I am going to fulfill this feel, it is not my job. Whether you want it or you don't want it, I say I want it, how great it would be if I could have it. How great it would be if I could have it. When I have that in my mind, that is an indication that I have already lived through it. As if I am not going to live in the future, it is there already, and I am feeling for it. I want to live a life like that, how great it would be. As if I have already gone through the entire life. This is the truth. There is nothing you are going to gain tomorrow. Whatever you have in your mind as beauty of tomorrow, your duty is to abide by it. It is not for you to find the way, but keep it up as aspiration, as a wanton desire, such a beautiful desire I am anticipating, not aspiring actually. As if it has happened, the gift is going to come to me, I am anticipating. Aspiration is not necessary for us, but anticipating so earnestly and ardently that you have in your heart as the greatest of all feelings of tomorrow. Why it is the greatest of all feelings of tomorrow is, it is because nobody has the means to achieve it for me, except the means must come to me. I have nothing to do to pave, the, my, my, to pave away my path and get lost in the din. I am not going to work now because I have no way. I have something in my mind, I must have a fearless tomorrow, a carefree tomorrow, such a beautiful life, stress-free life, no stress in my mind, no strain to my body, there is no physical ailment, there is no physical suffering. This is the life I want. Who has given this thought to me? It is not only with me, it is there with everybody. Everybody wants a life that has no stress in the mind or strain in the body. Strain to the body is the disease. Stress in the mind is that I want to do something, but I have no way how to do it. Achieving is the achieving the future. Achieving my heartfelt, thanks to the field God has given to me. The almighty power has given to me something that nobody has achieved on this earth and nobody can achieve by the means given to them, that is the knowledge of the people. The knowledge is the hearsays of yesterday. 
whatever is going on now, I am observing and I am converting into a speech, into a language, that's all. The knowledge is over there. What I have in my mind for my future, definitely I have to abide by it, have a strong hold on to it. There is no doubts in it I can entertain throughout my life yet to come. This is how the mind power is starting to work within us. I want, for example, food. When I say food, I am thinking of a restaurant, I am thinking of a provisional store, I am thinking of a job, I am thinking of money, but not food. I need my strength. I am talking about some gym, I am talking about some exercising methods. After that, there is nothing more I can think of. Good food, and then extreme exercises, or moderate to extreme, whatever we think we deem fit for us, we are doing. But in the end, I am not happy at all. Physically, I am a little bit tired after the exercise. In a very nearby feel is, the moment I do some exercise, before beginning of exercise, I am feeling very much energetic. After the exercise, I feel very tight. I think that I am energized. No. During the stress to the body, what happens is, your body muscles go for constriction. It goes in for a state of spasm. Continued exercise gives a spasm to the muscles, and that crushes the blood vessels, stopping the circulation to enter the place where there is the exercise part of it going on. Now, when I am doing a strenuous exercise or a flexing exercise to my muscles, the blood vessels are occluded. No nutrition passes to it. This causes a relative state of death to the muscles and tissues. A partial death to the muscles and tissues. If you know, when people die, after one or two hours, they go in for severe spasmic contractions of the muscles, the muscles will go rigid like bones. We call it rigor mortis. After the death, post-mortem reports, the, the forensic people will know. Once you die, after two hours to three hours, the muscles will go in for spasm because no blood supply. Blood supply is cut off. It goes in for severe spasm that causes the rigor mortis syndrome. Like When I am doing the exercise, Artificially, I am creating a partial rigor mortis-like syndrome. My muscles, whichever muscles are given strain to the, because of the exercise, by means of uh, severe stress to the mind as well as to the body. I am not able to lift, I am not able to do this severe exercise, but I have to do it. This stress causes further strain to the body, weakness to the muscle musculature. Now what happens is, the Muscles go in for spasm, obstructing the blood supply, and cuts off the nutrition. This results in a partial death, a temporary death called rigor mortis, partial rigor mortis, that I feel the stiffness in my body after the exercise. We wrongfully attribute this to the strengthening of my muscles, and I am staying hale and hearty. No, it is not like that. It is taxing your mind, taxing your body in the long run, what will happen is, you will be losing your energy, then gaining energy. Further and further, we have to clarify to our mind that we will not be unnecessarily stressing our mind, which will definitely result in stress to the body. At the age of 57 years, I have not done an exercise. Not even lifted a finger without purpose. I hate exercise. but. I live now without any medicine, without any gadgets to check my parameters. Nothing is like what your mind says, I am okay. The finest of all gadgets is your mind when it says you are okay. At that point of time, whatever BP you have, whatever cholesterol you have, whatever fat you have, I am 105 kilograms weight. I am hearty, I am healthy, I am wealthy, mind-wise, not money-wise. This is the procedure I would like to tell you 
that keep your mind fit. From your mind, the energy develops, not from your body. If I ask you one question, whether your life energy saves your body or your body is preserving the life energy. Whether the life force is saving the body or the body is saving the life force, it is the life force that saves the body. Now you say, give organ donation, I will be saving the life. Is it applicable to sense? No. How come a body can save the life force, whether life force is creating, originating in my entire frame? When I was in the womb, before even I was a conceptual product, I was nothing in my womb, in my status. I was something abstract. Nobody knows where I was. But the energy accumulation started, and thereafter, I developed into a ball of cells, tissues, then variants, then I was shaped up into a human being. Before that, we would like to entertain one subject. Mind is the root cause of all our activities. It is not the body that is controlling my mind. My mind must have control over my body. My body cannot have control over my mind. My mind has every reason to think and act, but the body is simply a mechanical device like a robo. It has no brains at all. If you have no mind and your body is functioning, I will call you, you are a lunatic. If you have a purpose, then definitely you are a man of some action. When I am doing this, when I am making my grimaces, when I am giving some expressions and the tone is adjusted up and down, all these things are necessary only if I have a soulful talk. If I am speaking the truth by which I am living, this simply doesn't matter at all. All these gestures require to give energy to the speech, to give energy to the language, to give meaning to the language. Without these gestures, without these expressions, with tonal quality changing up and down, all this gives a life energy to the speech. Without this, the, the language is a dumb and a dummy, and it makes no sense, and it becomes null and void in the end. We give appreciation to our mind. I need food. This food is for my taste and for my satiation of my appetite. The appetite for my stomach and the taste for my tongue is essential for my food. Food is everywhere, but we think of a grain, say a rice or wheat. This is no food at all. You want food. Food means a sumptuous one, whatever you need in varieties, that is food. But we settled down for rice. No. You need food. That is my field. Who gave this field to me? It is the almighty creator's wish that I must have food, sumptuous food, tasty food, that soothes your, soothes your heart, soothes your mind, so that your body is calm. Without taste to the mind, without taste to the tongue, my mind is not at all at ease. If a tasteless food is given, even if I am hungry, I will toss it onto the garbage. I will not take it. So you need food, but we convert it into a farm. Don't figure it out. You don't know what, figure, what a food is. Food is something that gives you energy to the mind as well as to the body. But we are saying that food gives energy to the body, preserves the life force. No, it gives first solace to the mind. That aroma, that flavor, that taste part of it. And how best it is cooked, it all goes before I start tasting, eating actually the food. So the aroma must be good, the taste must be good, the color must be good, the feel must be good, then I am tasting. Every food must have all the five special senses together. These five special senses gives energy to the mind first. 
to see nicely presented, beautiful, the food is served in a nice manner, and to feel it is good, the touch feeling, and smell is good, and taste is good. And when I am eating that crunchiness, that sound is good. All these five special senses must culminate, must come together to give energy to the mind. Then this mind level energy gives energy to the body and functioning of the body is so perfect if I am very much satisfied about what I had in my mind, what I had as a food. Anything that you want is, we must remember today all the five special senses must be satisfied if only these things are satisfied, this is good for me, this is beautiful for me, otherwise it is harmful to me. This mic is good, gave good sense, but there's no taste to it, no smell. So something is inferior. I don't like this. Everything around, the flowers are there, it is good, but I don't like it because no smell, no taste, nothing. A part of it is existing, most part of it, to suit my five special senses is gone. But only one thing in the whole world which satisfies the entire five special senses is a woman to a man and a man to a woman. All the five special senses. Beautiful to hear, beautiful to see, beautiful for the touch, and beautiful to taste. So many things are there, and everything put together is one and only of the creations, that is the human creations, man for woman and woman for man. So this is the most possessed one. I will not give it to anybody. Such is the possession that we must have. Mind's power is most important. Mind's capacity is most important. Mind's solace is most important. Whatever you do must satisfy all these five special senses. Without this satisfaction, there is nothing fruitful is going to come out of it. Now I am concentrating on my mind. I want food, not the rice, not the grain, but wholesomeness. Uh, the whole thing I want. So a few years ago, the rice was sold for 13 per kilo, 13 rupees per kilo. We harbored.